Welcome back, Akron fans! Game 4 of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament Finals between Gode and Cybernetic Pony are about to begin on Desecrated Temple. One of my favorite maps, by the way. Though I'd hate to say that because I made most of the maps in Akron, so yeah, that's kind of... Also because this map was actually pretty heavily inspired by Lost Temple and Starcraft, so yeah. A little bit shameless. Just a little bit. Let's start it! Get... Let us get started. Despite my poor grammar. Cybernetic Pony starting out on the west side of the map, and Gode starting out on the north side of the map, and like I said, this is a kind of Lost Temple map. Gode going for Grekum, we saw that Cybernetic Pony is going for CISO. So yeah, given the map design, we have mains at the west, the north, the east, and the south. Natural expansion right next to them, down a little ramp, and expansions in between the bases as well, both near the center and on the outside, depending on which between. As well as expansions at the northeast and southwest corners. Or sorry, northwest and southeast corners. I really get east and west mixed up all the time. I don't know what it is about me. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony going for CISO, getting early... He is getting early RPs, and moving forward, immediately identifying where Gode is, I'm guessing that they probably didn't have... Or no, no, he's not immediately identifying it. He is scouting out visually. They may not have had... I really want to know if they had Fog of War out for the south. That's what I want to know, is if... The Fog of War sounds are getting through. If the players played with that on or not. I'm curious. Anyway, Gode is getting up. RPs. Nothing too out of the ordinary. This RP does allow him to get QP or R or LC, depending on whether or not he, like which one he wants. There's no movement penalty for that. And it looks like he is going for early Q Plasma just to get that early Octopod. Probably gonna switch it over to Liquid Crystal once he gets that first pull of LC. Or sorry, first pull of QP. And Factory very quickly coming up for Cybernetic Pony. Getting his 6th RP, the LCQP Twin RP, not... Which is interesting. Gode is going for the... That is his 5th. Probably not the biggest deal in the world, but it does give Gode a slightly faster tech. And he's also going for a bit of scouting, probably Echo Scouting, to the south and... South and east, possibly setting up as well to the south, just to try to get himself set up. Looks like... Cybernetic Pony is aware of what of where Gode is, has his Marine or Special Ops has seen what's going on. Or presumably has seen what's going on. And we'll see what happens with this Marine here. No, the Marine is tagging along with the Special Op, and it looks like Gode is his position is known. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has not been spotted yet. Gode, in fact, not scouting him. That's the one position he's not scouting out right now. Although, that being said, he's actually only scouting out the south. He's going to spot this Marine, going to know that Cybernetic Pony is not at that south start. He's going to know it's at the west start. And Cybernetic Pony got a Lancer early on for scouting, for harassment. Nothing too major right now. This special op still kind of in place. We'll see what he's up to, though. Got a jumping back to the 15-second mark and is... Well, still doing nothing out of the ordinary. Not really changing up a strategy too much. That's the one thing about Akron games there. The beginning, of course, is a little bit wonky because it's kind of slow, but also the players tend to replay the beginning over and over again just to try to perfect it. So the beginning has a tendency to get a little bit dragged on. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony now fully aware. I wasn't sure if he was before, but he definitely is now aware that Gode is over here. Did move his special ops over, has seen what's going on. Not sure what he's going to do with that. We'll see what he is up to once he actually... If he makes any moves there, he is moving his Lancer over there. So he's he is going for a bit of an attack on that one. And the Gode is not sure if he is wise to where Cybernetic Pony is. I'm guessing sound must be through because Gode has not scouted out Cybernetic Pony this entire time. He must just hear out where Cybernetic Pony is because I can't think of any way else he could possibly know where Cybernetic Pony has been this entire time. Jumping back to the 117 mark, right next to the Impelo Past, he's. Well. Not changing much. He is once again moving out to scout, but not much is going on there. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, jumping back to the 233 mark and getting his Lancer rallied. I mean, there's really not much going on. What else can I talk about here? I guess the map. I mean, the map is. I'll do it size. I mean, you have a lot of. Especially, this is the kind of near start position. The ramps are facing in the direction. That both players, so both players going down the ramps are just going to end up meeting their opponent right away. Which is kind of a tricky setup. I mean, you can take the south, 
the west player can easily take the south, and the north player can easily take the east, and then you have two bases to deal with here. It looks like, I mean, Cybernetic Pony was probably aware that he did move his Lancer over to the east beforehand, just to make sure, although admittedly I don't think he knew where Godeo was at the time. But yeah, players can kind of make hidden bases in that way, because it's the furthest position from their opponent. So somewhat the safest base to go for. Or going for one of the corner bases, too. Oh, okay. Gode pointing out in chat that the sounds were not going through Fog of War. The players were not hearing things out. And a comm center coming up for Samurai Pony. That's nice to see. I enjoy seeing comm centers. They're, they're good buildings to have. I kind of wish people would build more of them, but that's something that a lot of players don't do. It's 23 LC, 20 QP for a lot of vision. And also a couple other things like Auto Hierarchy and Smart Idol, but mostly a lot of vision. And another... Is Sauron... Okay, a comm center wall, apparently. First time I have... I think I've ever seen a wall off. No, actually the second time I've seen a wall off in Akron. But the first time I've seen it with comm centers, this is new. This is... Certainly interesting. Probably one of the cheaper buildings to build walls with. That's... I mean, 800... 800 health. And he can build walls that easily. And actually has... He's left enough space for his marines to get through. That's the thing to point out. There is exactly enough space for marines to get through, and comm centers are cloaked. So as far as Cybernetic Pony is... Sorry, as far as Gode is concerned, there's nothing here. This is entirely open. Although, actually, if he sees the construction, he'll know. But once they're done, he has no idea they're there. And they've been SimCity just so that only marines can get through them. But of course, they can fly. So if he needs to move tanks and... Mar tanks and any other ground units through it. You can just lift them one off. You can lift the center one off, and or any of them off, and you can get them through. Easy as that. But yeah, a wall. I have not seen a wall in ever in Agron, which is a little bit surprising. Admittedly, like I said, it's from comm centers, which are one of the less popular buildings. But still, I, I would have expected to see it earlier. Come to think of it, I guess people thought you'd have to go for importer wall in or armory or something like that. I mean, Vecchio can't easily wall in. It can comm hub wall in. That's about the only way you can really do it. Grecum doesn't have much of an option to do so, though. But yeah, that's that's a wall-in. <laughs> so at this point, Cybernetic Pony's pretty confident he can just take all of everything going on in his base here. Although, okay, probably should point out one of the big reasons that wall-ins were not popular for the longest time, even if people did try them once or twice, was because air units up until, I think, 1520 or somewhere in that area were pretty much over... No, bitter than that. But yeah, Aryans still actually, I think 1.3, were basically the go-to unit. Everyone just went to air as quickly as possible and never bothered to build anything else. And right now we do see Gode is going for air, and he actually has chronoporting as well. But Cybernetti Pony does have the wall up, and he does it's worth it. I mean the thing is is that yeah, Aryans can come in, but ground armies do happen. Ground hobbies ground armies used to not happen in Akron, and now they do. They've been happening for quite a few versions now. And this is the first time we've seen a wall off as a response to it. And Desecrated Temple is a good map for it. You can actually do it at the top of the ramp, too, in a more of a StarCrafty style. Though, admittedly, this is also kind of StarCrafty. And I'm not entirely sure. I think. I'd have to double check, in fact. I, there might be two. I don't know if there's two tiles of space here or just one between these two, are, these two comm centers. The ones further north. However, Gode getting his first chronoports going looks like a Sepipod is what is getting chronoported as well. Could be a problem, given that the wall-off is... Well, it's based on cloaked buildings, which are... Kind of... They are detected by Sepipods. That's the one thing. And Cybernetic Pony... No, it was the Octopod, never mind. Octopod was the one that was chronoported back, not Sepipods. The Octopod, if it does go towards this base, it does have... Okay, now the Sepipods have been chronoported back. But yeah, it does have the wall to contend with, which the Sepipod will help counter. Because the Sepipod can... Sepipods detect cloaked units. But no, it looks like... Gode is just focusing on this. He's going to re-chronoport from here. Not, not sure if he's going to re-chronoport for an uppercut or what. We'll see what happens. Just going to wait until... Ultimately, he's going to wait until the re-chronoport delay is over. Setting him an Octopod into a position that's not that useful. Can't easily get in there, but... Waiting for chronoport delay. <laughs> just really desperately trying to re-chronoport. I think he's aware of where Cybernetic Pony is, but I'm not entirely sure. That or he's going for... F I was going to think he's going for Far Legos in the past, but I don't think so. Far Legos would require Aspire and Lego class tech, which does not exist over here. We'll see what Gode is up to once that comes up. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, does have 
aim macropap. He does have Twin Mars. He is a ton of importers. He's going to be just pumping out Twin Mars from here on out. And tanks as well. And Tornado. He's, he's got a good set of units to defend. The Seppi is going to be a problem. The turret's going to help with that. Yeah, Cyberman Pony has just been going for economy. The one problem is that taking his third is a problem. Like, yeah, if he's going to take his third, it's going to be over here probably. And that's going to require that he gets out of his wall. And this third is actually really hard to defend to begin with, so it's it's kind of tough. He might actually take one of the south base, like the south base here, and wall that off as well, just to take that as a third. Hasn't actually approached either though. Gode is oh, Samurai Pony jumping back. Does see the Octopod come back? This is where the Chronoport Octopod was coming in, and it gets stopped by the. No, it does not get stopped by the wall because Octopods have must have expected that Octopods had tank pathfinding and not infantry path, or sorry, vehicle pathfinding, and not ve infantry pathfinding. Because it is able to get through this wall. This section here, it's a little hard to tell, but yeah, this is apparent. This is pathable by infantry. I think it's pathable by vehicles as well, but definitely by infantry. This comm hub was, if it was moved a little bit further south, I think it might have worked, or another comm hub put in place. But that's kind of unfortunate. Cybernetic Pony does not have a full wall off. A small hole in the wall, which Gode takes advantage of, really. And, I mean, we can see on the timeline, there's a lot of damage being dealt as a result. We're looking from Saturday Pony's point of view. He's had a lot of units die here. Godet jumping back to when this happened. And this is before the defenses are set up. He is able to get a lot of this economy damaged heavily. So, I mean, a good idea from Cybernetic Pony, but not quite placed perfectly. Like I said, I think he thought because... Okay, the thing is the comm centers... Comm centers can't be built up here. The buildings, it's not flat enough for buildings. I think it might be flat enough for vehicles. It's definitely flat enough for infantry. Which includes Octobots. That was basically the one mistake that was made here. That's it. I mean, it's a subtle mistake, especially given that this is best... Probably the first wall-off, I think. This is the first wall-off in this version, at least. So not a lot of practice actually having done this and what it works against and what's a complete wall-off. But it was close. It wasn't a bad... It wasn't a bad move in concept. It just wasn't quite the right placement. Another comm center here might have done it. It, just, it was just a question of placement. That was really all it is. And Cybernetic Pony... Now aware of what's happening, and Seppipod's breaking that wall down, so it really makes no difference at this point. Because, like I said, they detect and they hit pretty hard against ground as well. So, Gode is breaking this open. A mech is in place, tanks are in place, Seppipods don't have a huge chance. They might be able to get rid of this Tornad, however. That's going to be a problem. Gode, from his point of view, he's going to be chronoporting back more. No doubt he's going to be chronoporting back more. He has a Seppipod in here just in case, just to watch that third. Or at least that's where, no, it's where he started from. That's the pre chrono Seppi Seppipod. And this Seppipod is actually getting knocked out by Twin Mars, of all things. And there's that, like I said, that's the pre chrono Seppi Seppipod, which is going to be sent back. We just saw it get sent back. And we saw it die as well. We saw it after being sent back. It dies horribly to Twin Mars. Now, go to Taking advantage of this opportunity to expand. He is getting a bunch of expansions. Getting RPs in place. Not sure what's happening with this RP here the heck is going on with here? Apparently getting very confused about where it should land. That is odd, but okay, whatever. More importantly, Cybernetic Pony, okay, Cybernetic Pony has gate tech. He has, he's getting heavy cruisers. He has grenades and machinery. I mean, he had machinery for a while. I almost feel like he's going to go for aerospace, just go for carriers, go all out, because... He's got a well, actually, he hasn't got that much money. He's probably not going to go for that. If he expands once again... He might go over something crazy like that, but it looks like he's just going to go for the Chrono Porting, and then... Not sure from there what he's going to do. He had the Heavy Cruiser further in the future, but at this point, hasn't got that built up. And Gode's point of view has his expansion up. Natural expansion is built. It's actually, Gode's been behind economically. He has a lot of money in the bank from not spending any, but he's kind of behind income-wise. Income he's way behind. Cybernetic Pony has had a lot more income this entire time, and spending a lot of it too... So Cybernetic Pony has a much larger army as a result. It's going to chronoport a lot of it back, and Gota is going to have a tough time dealing with this. Granted, Gota is playing Grekum, so it's going to have the easiest possible time dealing with this from all species. But still, he's going to have a hard time dealing with this. Not the easiest thing to do. Back go the Faropods, and Cybernetic Pony is going to have, once again, a bit of a problem. But still, he has Tornads, he has Frigates, he has Twant Tanks. It's not going to be that big of a deal. I don't think... Is Gota... I think Gode might be going for a recurrent port on that one, though. We'll see. I don't know. He's been focusing very heavily on recurrent ports. I'm not sure if he's been focusing so much on building the units. Building the units is where I think... I think he's falling behind. Cybernetic Pony is taking this game and 
Gode is falling behind. The Red Pony, the only weakness for him is that he hasn't pushed out, which really, it's hard to do. I'm not blaming him for not pushing out. He is, however, getting a lot of infantry as well. It's infantry, he has tanks, he has Mar tanks, Twin Mars. I should point out that tanks and... Well, let's see. Tanks have a capacity and not Mars, but Twin Mars have a capacity as well. I'm not sure if there are any Twin Mars on the field right now. But yeah, tanks and Twin Mars can actually store two infantry each. They can store infantry, and when they get attacked, when they get into combat, they immediately release them. Just automatically release the infantry. MFBs back as well. Haven't seen these in a while. I can't remember the last time I've seen MFBs be built, but I'm glad they're built here too. Gode, on the other hand, he's going for fire pods. He's going for a lot of fire pods. Echoing them out. Looks like he might be trying to permaclone that. Mar tank or Twin Mar apparently getting teleported to this expansion to damage it. Cybernetic Pony. Yeah, he teleports this over the 11 3 mark and able to deal quite a lot of damage here. Ultimately able to get rid of this base and looks if we saw it from the future correctly, Goda is gonna try to chronoport around this, but I think I think that damage is dealt. Yeah, in Goda's point of view, that damage has been dealt. The expansion has been destroyed by the Twin Mar. Mind you, of course, further in the past is what really counts, but regardless, that's a good distraction there. And Cybernetic Pony not expanding with that. He's not going to the South Expansion. He's not going to the East Expansion. I mean, Gode doesn't expect it. No units have been... I mean, it's not like Gode has been placing units around the map just to test for expansions or anything like that. He's not been making sure he knows where the expansions are. He has, however, been... He is actually running out of LC in his main base, moving a lot of his RPs over to the third and... Cronenport back and teleport in by Cybernetic Pony. Tanks attacking as well. This is... Tanks, along with the Twin Mars, this is going to be a lot harder for the Firebots to deal with. No detectors, though. Actually, that's the thing to point out. Gode has cloaked units. They aren't, I don't think, cloaked at the moment. They chronoport, though. Well, I can't even easily see it. Cannot see if they're cloaked. I would see them if they were cloaked. It's not... That's not the case, but... Yeah, Cybernetic Pony, like I said, just has been spending his, his money a lot better than Gode has up to this point. Everything's been army for him, and Gode has just been going for a lot of chronoporting, and the firepots are not cloaked! None of the firepots are cloaked. They are all uncloaked. The tanks can see the no problem. The tanks can get rid of the no problem. The Octo being biggest distraction here. Still, that's all, that's mostly chronoported firepods. Those are not so much built firepods as they are firepods from the future. So Gode still has a chance here. And Cybernetic Pony double-checking the attack that came in originally. Not too concerned, though. He probably is going to send back another force once it gets to it. Bit surprised he didn't put... Okay, he does have Marines inside the tanks. And this is for the second attack from the looks of it. He is going to go for this. Not sure why he doesn't have any Marines inside this tank. He's going to send all of them back at once. He doesn't have a lot of Q-Plasma. That's the one thing. The one downside of having this one base and not building a lot of Q-Plasma RPs. He doesn't have a lot of Q-Plasma for the chronoporting itself. He can uppercut, but he can't easily chronoport with everything all at once and just rush in, destroying Gode's entire base. He cannot do that. He doesn't have the Q-Plasma, what to do so. Gode, however, does. That's the thing. Gode has the Q-Plasma. He actually has weaponry now. He could throw... He could be throwing out Chrono Bombs right now. Or Plasma Cruise Missiles if he wanted to. He doesn't have money for the, either. Probably going to throw out Chrono Bombs. That's usually what's used. Plasma Cruise Missiles would be interesting, though. Or Plasma Bombs, whatever they're called. Plasma Bombs would be interesting to see. I think he's probably not going to do that. He's probably just going to go with the more typical Chrono Bomb. So Cybernetic Pony is... Also researching everything. Has a nuke in the heavy cruiser. Has specials as well for TSS, maybe? I don't know. TSS is really all he has. He can't use nanites. He has no heavy tanks, for one thing. He could get them, but nanites were banned in the tournament, so he doesn't actually have that as a viable option. And Gode, now seeing how big of an army Cybernetic Pony has, probably going to be chronoporting back to try to deal with this with sheer re numbers. But not even going for that at all. He's really not pushing hard and he's losing a lot of losing a lot of income generating our income generating crates here doesn't have a lot of Q plasma left not in his main base this third base he has quite a lot but main base he has none and that's a plasma cruise missile that's a plasma bomb they are being sent out cybernetic pony is gonna have to worry about this he might be able to shoot it down in time though they can be shot down before they explode but all of his units are right at ground zero Gonna be interesting. No, it looks like it doesn't. It does in fact go off. This big blue bar here. That is it going off and a bunch of stuff dying, or at least potentially a bunch of stuff dying. Not sure how much stuff is actually dying here, but we'll see. A chrono 
Chrono Part looks looks pretty imminent. All the tanks together are well, it's 236 LC or sorry, QP. Yeah, it looks like there could be a pretty powerful Chrono Port right now. The Chrono Energy is the restriction, however, but once that's regenerated, then that's going to be huge. However, the Green Time Wave didn't actually deal a lot of damage from the looks of it. I I don't see where the Chrono Bomb dealt damage. It might have been further north, but maybe it was a total miss. I mean, it dealt damage, that's for sure. But Chrono Port and Teleport back here. Massive, a fairly massive army coming in to go to his base. And the fact that the infantry are inside the tanks is huge. This is why infantry can be inside tanks, because they can't survive long on their own. But inside of tanks, they do a lot of damage. And a nuke as well coming in. Heavy crews are going to come in to drop that nuke right inside the space. I don't think he's going to survive to do it, though. No, it's not. It is not going to survive. Not going to survive the three seconds to kill. He's not even going to try. It takes three and a half seconds for it to drop that nuke, and it is not going to be able to do so. But yeah, tanks having the infantry inside them means the infantry can actually survive to get there. That's pretty huge. And Gode taking a lot of damage. His main base, all these gray bars are deaths. And Severn Pony double checking back when this happens. And as you see, the infantry have been popped out. As soon as combat is joined, the infantry jump out of the tanks and start attacking. And the infantry in this game are glass cannons. So Rosisa to have this is a very powerful ability, which is underused. We see Severn Pony taking full advantage of it and basically taking the game from Gode at this point. Gode not throwing in the towel and actually apparently doesn't throw in the towel for another hour. Got it, just to spoil it, yeah, apparently Gode just tries to... Oh yeah, there's the... That's the Plasma Cruise Missile, destroying a lot, but not everything. But this attack, while powerful, actually... Oh, I guess it was slightly interfered with by the result of that Chrono Bomb. But now, TS... Okay, TSS Heavy Cruiser coming in, just in case for when that blue time up comes along and the attack isn't as powerful as it once was, just to nuke it out. Seven Night Pony, probably just going to drop a nuke right here for when the next time up comes along. This is TSS, so it's going to be hard to deal with. There it goes, dropping the nuke. From this iteration, it looks like he just nuked his own forces for no good reason. Of course, what actually happened is he nuked his own forces for a very good reason, which is that those forces will not exist then, but it will be that will allow him to deal with what happens with the Plasma Cruise Missile destroying a lot of his army. However, I think... Is he even going to come up? Looks like in this case he still managed to destroy Gota's base a little bit slower than the first iteration that he tried, but fairly quickly nonetheless. But Gota coming back, jumping, he's starting to chronoport back some of his epipods and pods, trying to delay this as best as he can. And Cyber Knight Pony has in this iteration once again taken out a lot of Gota's base. More Marines coming in, more units coming in. Cyber Knight Pony is. Once again, getting another army set up. I'm surprised the MFBs have not gone along with the army. That's actually really surprising. Like one or two MFBs would be... They'd be a great asset to have. And it looks like... Okay, I can't really tell what's going on in the... No one's coming back in the past to see what's going on. Looks like Cybernetic Pony... From his point of view... Does have to deal with a lot of these forces, but... Has destroyed all of Gode's base. All of it. It's actually... Gode does not have any way of rebuilding from this point on. All he can do is push forward to these forces to try to destroy Cybernetic Pony's base. That's not likely to happen. Once the green time comes along, Gode has absolutely nothing to build and nothing to rebuild with. All he has is the units he's been trying to just chronoport back, trying to permaclone back, and that is it. Base is gone. These units... Legal class does not exist. If it did exist, a comeback would be much easier, but it does not exist. Because legal class units, of course, can split down into base class units. But without legal class units, there's no base class units. Without base class units, there's no way to build all these buildings. And there are no base class units left. Right now, when we're looking, there are. But when Cybernetic Pony is, there isn't. So at this point, I'm just going to speed it up. A ton. So we do have... Heavy Cruiser is trying to get rid of a lot of the economy. Cybernetic Pony does see where the economy has been set up. So Gode can't easily get around this. But a lot of his units have not been dealt with directly. The units over here in the front have not been attacked. And Recoronaport's coming back to deal with that Heavy Cruiser. That's a fairly big deal, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Now, Gode is... Gonna have a hard time dealing with this. He has to... I mean, Saturday Pony jumping back here at the Unplayable Pass edge. 
has a lot of sepipods to deal with, but even then, they aren't the biggest deal to deal with. Now, these sepipods are... They aren't lasting long against the marines. That thing, they are not good against ground. And now, a massive ground force coming to get rid of the economy instead of the massive air force. And Gode does see this coming. He is... Trying to deal with it as best he can. Does have his heavy pods going forward. They are getting destroyed by the heavy tanks. Gonna try to continue to recorner around that. And it looks like the destruction of the economy here has been solidified. At this point, Gode does have a lot of Q Plasma in the bank. That's all he has going for him is Q Plasma to corner back these forces. They are you know, cloning around the map, but at this point we do see there isn't much left. There's a bunch of There's sepi pods around the map. Bunch of random points with spar pods as well. Getting hunted down by Cybernetic Pony. Trying to get as many as he can. But, okay, it looks like the game's actually starting to lag out even at this speed. So yeah, it's just... Okay. As you can see, you can clearly see that Gode has, in fact, lost this game. There's no way for him to get back in the game, even with recron reporting. There's no way to get for him to get back in the game, given the amount of ground forces that Cybernetic Pony is going to be building. And yeah, I realized that 100% it's it kind of lagged behind a bit. So, yeah, Cybernetic Pony apparently, throughout this game, tried to kill everything and ultimately ended up just building turrets around every single square meter of the map in order to kill off all of the area units in play. But since that's rather long and probably a little bit boring, I'm just going to skip that and say Cybernetic Pony wins this game 2-2 against Gode. Be back for game 5 shortly, so stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Akron fans, to Game 5 of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament. This is it. This is the end. We're done after this game. Once this game done between 720 and Gode, then it's all over. All of it. Done. We're finally finished this tournament that should have been done four months ago. We're finally done now. Hooray! Anyway, let's start up. It's going to be on Tomb of Heroes, which is... A great map for an absolute grand finals, finals, tiebreaker, best of five. And it's going to be on this map, and it's going to be right now. Cybernetic Pony starting in the east side of the map. Starting out as CISO. And... Oops. Gode, on the other hand, what is he going to be? Is he going to be Grekum? He is indeed going to be Grekum. CISO versus Grekum starts the, ends the way it starts, and we are going to have... Hopefully a pretty exciting match here. Admittedly, last game was kind of neat. There were a lot of cool things going on, although it did drag on a bit, and of course I cut out once it was clear who won. And yeah, Cybernetic Pony does have, like I said, it's game five. He won last game, so both players very evenly matched here, which is good to see that Gode does have some competition in Akron as well as 0k. Although admittedly 0k is fairly recent, but still, yeah. Definitely some competition. And... It's been a good series. I mean, a lot of weird strategies going on so far. I mean, the first game you had the... What was it? Oh, yeah, the Echo Chrono porting that Godea won with. Second game you had the species switch into Zion Pulsar Rush, which isn't hugely unusual, but a little bit cheesy. And, of course, third game there was the... That was on Kratoria. Yeah, that was the early gate tech using the neutral Chrono Porter. I've never seen that happen before. That was cool. And the last game, of course, had the Com Hub Wall. And a lot of investment behind that combo ball by Cybernetic Pony. And now we'll see what goes on in Tomb of Heroes. This map has had some proxy strategies done up before. Usually the north side has a lot of proxying going on. Not sure what's going to happen here. Probably not. Looks like the players are sticking inside their base. Gode is just getting his economy going. He's got Octos building up RPs. Probably just going to go for like 8 and 4 and then try to get tech from there. Not going for an early Octopod. Not at all worried about being attacked early on, which is actually right. He's not getting attacked early on. While Cybernetic Pony is going for a bit of Lancer. No, I should point out, there actually hasn't been any ATHC harassment at all this entire series. None. Not once has it come up, which is unusual, but it hasn't. Cybernetic Pony's been going entirely for Lancers. He's had, I think he's built a grand total of zero ATHCs this entire series. And... Gode, he could build Octopods against the Lancers, that would work, but not too worried about it, apparently. Figures he can just get rid of it with a Seppi or two, and that's true, he can. Hasn't actually really 
bothered much about it though. The Marine and Special Ops are a big they're a bigger concern, but Cybernetic Pony is probably not gonna be too focused on keeping them in there. He is in fact going north and probably just gonna maybe expand along the north a little bit, drop a few buildings down along the way. That's not uncommon. But at the 325 mark, he does have some damage being dealt to the Arctic. He's probably gonna move in a bit and see what else he can do. Cybernetic Pony, however, does have to contend with the Seppi coming into his base. The Faro was killed along the way, and Gode just probably an Echo Scout here. That's that's all that really matters. That's an Echo Scout. He's not actually going to be doing that for real, likely. But this Epi does see what Gode is... Sorry, sees what Pony is up to. Gode is aware of what's going on. Cybernetic Pony is aware of what's going on. Both players know what their opponents are up to, know what their opponents are playing. Not quite sure what their opponents are actually going to be doing strategy-wise. I mean, as far as Cybernetic Pony is concerned, Gode is going for a proxy. Not necessarily sure what's happening there, but... Cybernetic Pony is going to be... Well... And he might expect it's just Echo. He's probably going to wait a little bit, see what's going on. I don't see him checking for a proxy. This Lancer is just going straight forward. He's not moving around his base, seeing if there is a proxy duo anywhere around there. He's just... He's hanging out here. He's assuming that Gode is going to remain on the level. And this is game five, and Gode probably not going to go for cheese in the last game. And... Oh, hey! How about that? The, I think that's the first ATHC of this... I'm not sure if that is the first ATHC, but it's one of the first ATHCs, if not the first ATHC of the entire series, being built right now to deal with this Faro. A task at which it'll succeed handily. Although admittedly it doesn't protect the Marine successfully, but still, it will be able to kill that Faro in time. For it to not kill anything other than the Marine. However, it looks like Gode is getting that Faro more or less out of the way. Nope, never mind. Looks like events are not going to transpire any differently than how we first saw them. And Cybernetic Pony is not building anything in the north. He's obviously checking to see if, if Gode was building anything to the north, but nope. Neither player building anything to the north. Both players are concerned mostly with being able to just build up stuff here. Building up their main bases, getting their tech up. That's all that really matters. And Armory getting up for Cybernetic Pony. Three importers. Probably another fact, or fourth importer. I, I expect another factory or two to be built up as well, but he might just be going for a marine tank. Another marine tank push like last time. No tech from either player yet. 342 mark. This is a little bit late than I, I would have expected, though the reef is up for Gode. He could go for advanced structures anytime once he gets the money for it. Admittedly, anytime after about the four minute mark, that is. We're at the 322 mark. And thus, a reef is not in play right now. That is the one thing. However, Cybernetic Pony does have a lot of... Okay, when is he going to build the buildings to actually support these importers? Because he's got a lot of importers. Is he going for a massive imagery push? That would make sense for the amount of importers he has compared to the amount of production structures he's having. And the amount of RPs he has, for sure. I mean, five RPs and five, else, five importers, that is... That is a marine push right there. That is a marine push in the making. And there's the proxy! Like I said, north side of this map, or north side of the main base of this map... Good for proxies. Another armory being built up. A bunch of... Okay, I don't agree with this. I think you should build two armories and then split the marines between them. Not the biggest deal, but it would have sped this up a little bit. Doesn't look like there's any sort of clutch timing with that, though. Gode does not have... Yeah, there's no clutch timing here. Gode has the Octopod up one way or another. It's up. So it's not the biggest deal in the world that he's queuing up all those units. Just... I don't totally agree with it. I would have built more than one armory. Maybe three or four armories, even, at this point. Because he could easily support... Like two or three armories right here and just push out all the units and push them out that much faster and especially once they start to die the reinforcements would push out that much faster but thankfully for cybernetic pony infantry do not take that long to build so it's not like i said the biggest deal in the world that he's doing that i mean it is the biggest deal in the world that he is doing this proxy here that's huge goda is gonna have to deal with this and it's it's still possible he has knocked about up he doesn't have another set his sepi is in a reef and the reef construction is going to be on the unplayable past pretty much now. That means the Octopod here cannot be replaced too easily. Another step is going to be built in order for that to happen. The Auto and Faro are in place to help defend, and advanced structures is being built up. Gode getting advanced structures, but he might be pushing a bit too heavily for tech. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, getting more in his main base, investing a little bit more into his main base, getting RPs up, getting some tech up in case this proxy doesn't work, making sure it's not a total all in. Going to wait until he gets all 10 marines and special ops here or no he's actually already got 10 now once he gets it all done probably tell me back in about 30 seconds but yeah it's gonna get it all done about five minutes into the game go down on the other hand at that same point in time has to worry about this a little bit 
and there's a little lance here just in case expansion is happening towards the southwest, just to make sure, just so Cybernite Pony knows whether or not Godet is planning to expand, which he isn't. He's in fact, he's been doing a lot of one one base play recently. Though both players kind of have been. Expansion isn't too popular in Akron, so I'm not surprised. I just, I'm curious, when is Cybernite Pony going to attack? He's probably going to make it an edge attack. He's getting ground units. Okay, there we go. He's getting ground units. Once ground units is done, getting off of this armory as well. Once ground units is done, he's going to attack. Ground units, of course, that increases the damage of marines and mechs, as well as allowing for twin mars and heavy tanks. But yeah, the attack damage increase. I, Okay, he's doing off of... Okay, machinery off of the one at home. Ground units off of the one over here, from the looks of it. Not sure he's going to go for that. Is he going to go for that? Is he going to go for that? No, jumping back slightly and double checking, but he's not actually going for ground units. Going for machinery instead. Okay, he is not apparently pushing for a quick, massive infantry push with very high attack power. He is instead going for... Okay, pushing his Lancer up, but instead possibly going for Tornado attacks? He's getting machinery pretty quickly. Not entirely sure what the motivation is. Getting a quick Macrofab as well, so... MFB support, Heavy Cruiser support, otherwise I don't see the point of getting machinery this quickly. Ground units make sense, machinery not so much. But a macrofab is being built up, and he can build everything in it. So he could build heavy cruisers, could build MFBs. Blackbirds, maybe, if he wants to. Not sure why, but he could. But yeah, this push here, not happening. I'm not sure what he's waiting for. Like I said, when he had Grandians coming in, it would have worked, but now Chronoporting's in play. Godet can just Chronoport around this. I don't know what Cyber Knight Pony is waiting for. I mean, maybe he's waiting for it to be on the edge. Maybe he's waiting for enough money for ground units. I mean, he's not... He's building a bunch of stuff in his main base. He's got a solid main base behind that push. He just hasn't gone for it yet. Unless this proxy is meant to be a support push once he actually gets Twin Mars in, or Heavy Cruisers, or whatever he's planning on building in the Macrofab. Once that's done, we'll see... No, there we go. Okay, that's what happened. He cleverly, really cleverly pushed the attack before I even noticed. And Cybernetic Pony... Well, we don't see the attack going on, because he... It was a very, very clever on-edge attack. But now it's being pushed in, and Cybernetic Pony... Look from the beginning of the attack. Cybernetic Pony is able to get rid of one of the chronoported octopods. post chronoported octopod, it looks like the pre chronoported octopod is over here. So Godi still does have a chance here, but a lot of the Q-Plasma RPs are being destroyed. Enough Q-Plasma is in the bank to chronoport this octopod a couple times, but... Still, that is... That's Q-Plasma that is not gonna be... Easily replaced at this point. And this infantry... This is a fully dedicated attack, dealing fair amount of damage, getting rid of the... The QBRPs are a big deal. Because that, like I said, severely limits Godet's ability to chronoport. And that is what he was relying on. Probably relying on permacloning, maybe. Also getting rid of part of the triad. Gonna need the Arcticus to rebuild that part of the triad, get that Faro in there. And he has gotten the Seppi out of the Arcticus, getting another Faro on top of that. Or no, no he's not, just... That's just a Seppi for spare. This is another pass through the attack. Godet not really doing too much here, just gonna double check from his point of view at 648 mark. Not doing anything, just continuing to chronoport as best he can. Probably going to chronoport more of these octopods back in to help defend. But even with that, Cybernetic Pony able to get rid of the Q-Plasma RPs, severely limiting the chronoport ability, and... Godet doing what he can to def defend against this, but even with his best efforts, like I said, running out of Q-Plasma is not easy to deal with. We do see one of the octopods is going to chronoport back, and at this point, only one more octopod can chronoport back with this amount of Q-Plasma. So, Gode is in a very tight spot. He's fine right now, but when the next attack comes in, which is coming in, we have Twin Mars, we have Tornads. Sorry, we have, well, Twin Mars soon. We have Tornads. We actually don't have Twin Mars soon. Never mind. We don't have ground units. I think that might have been a mistake on Cybernetic Pony's part. But that being said, we still have Mars, if nothing else. Really, I'm surprised where the Twin Mars are. Okay, there's the ground units. There's Twin Mars. I mean, ground units would have been very useful before this attack as well, just to increase the attack power of the Marine. Yeah, Godet continuing to try to send back units, but like I said, not a lot of Q Plasma can't easily do that. He does have some departures going on. Some arrivals are coming in. They are going to help defend, but at this point, it really doesn't matter. The damage has been done. Godet is not in a healthy spot at all. A couple of Octopods coming back to help defend against this. That is the arrival, which, despite it, I think there's not much chance. I mean, Godet, Godet does have. Six, well, two octopods repeated three times. The same octopods echoed in, I think, actually. Don't even think these are the original ones. These are re They're just echoes. And all the departures you see on the timeline 
all the departures have just gone away. The arrivals will soon go away as well, and with that, will go Goda's chances of winning this tournament. Saturday Pony is poised to win. If he hasn't won yet, he's certainly in a great position to do so. Tornads are getting rid of the Octopods without too much issue. A bit of issue. The Octopods are actually fairly effective against air units, but nope. That's it. This is, I think, game. Saturday Pony getting more Mar tanks, getting more Twin Mars, getting more Tornads, and ultimately dealing enough damage here, crippling Goda, if nothing else. Like I said, crippling him, just allowing, allowing for one final blow, and at this point, Goday doesn't even have, he has one attempt, he's attempting to permaclone right here, I think he's going to be successful here. This permaclone attempt is going to succeed for at least some of the Octopods. Not all of them, some of the departures got messed up up here, or no, never mind. Two Octopods get here to be permacloned. So two of the Octopods getting permacloned, and the other two Octopods, or the other four Octopods here, their arrival is going to come in in the blue time wave, along with their Chrono Clone Brethren, but the thing is, Cybernetic Pony is continuing to push. He is not letting up. Gode trying to re-chronoport as best he can, trying to permaclone as best he can, but even then, Cybernetic Pony has map control, he has economy, he is trying to get her over to the north as well. He has army, he has everything. That that was a really nice proxy attack, and that I mean, good proxy attack with stuff being built behind it. I think the proxy could have hit sooner, I think it could hit with ground units, but the way it worked out, worked out. I mean Maybe small difference in technique might have made it faster. But regardless, Cybernetic Pony has won, well, pretty clearly won the tournament. This is, we're just watching Gode trying to do what he can with these last few Octopods. Still holding out a bit, but probably not going to be that much longer. So yeah, basically, Cybernetic Pony has essentially won the tournament. So congratulations to, well, premature possibly, congratulations to Cybernetic Pony. We'll see what Gode has up his sleeve. He's... It's not unlike him to have something up his sleeve, but yeah, I'm going to say congratulations because I think Cybernetic Pony has, I think he has this. I don't I see any way that he could not have this right now. Go to trying to chronoport as best he can, but even with the Octopods he has, he's probably going to try to re-chronoport a lot of these Octopods further back to permaclone them. And this is actually not a bad timing. I mean, Cybernetic Pony has not attacked at this point, but even... Eight Octopods against just the fact that they're being re chronoported over and over. Although it has replaced these RPs, but even then, it's very tough to deal with. Twinmar coming in here just to finish everything off, just to put the final nail in the coffin. And once that's done, well, that'll be. That will be officially game. That'll be officially tournament. Gode, he has chronoported back these units. There, that's what I was looking for. He has Chronoport back all his Octopods to try to permaclone them. A little bit too far in the future, though. They are not going to permaclone. Cybernetic Pony does spot those Octopods that are Chronoport back, and they don't even matter. They're not going to permaclone because they're not going to survive long enough, let alone actually be ultimately sent back in time. And with that, Gode has lost all of his units further in the past. It's like, remember, it's unplayable past Edge that wins, but I think Gode's going to throw in the towel before that happens, before that falls off the timeline. Actually, I think Goda's going to try to re as much as he can before it falls out the timeline. But I... Yeah, I don't see anything going from him at this point. The green time wave carries his death, and that's it! That's game! That's tournament! Cybernetic Pony has won! He has won! Goda has been beaten at a game! Goda can lose! Who knew? Apparently, Cybernetic Pony did. Because he has won. That is game, that is match. The best of five grand finals for the Acron 2013 Christmas Tournament. Thank you all for watching. It's been a really absurdly long ride. And it's finally over. Crowning Cybernetic Pony Champion, Gode taking second place, and Kitan with third. Thank you all for having watched this match and all the previous matches and this entire tournament. Thank you, Cybernetic Pony, for organizing, which is not suspect in the least. Although, admittedly, he, he tried hard to win. We saw him win fair and square. That was, that was a series of well-played games. Very glad to have casted that, and admittedly, the tournament took a little while. Double a limb has a tendency to do that, but yeah, Christmas tournament over in April. So once again, last time, thank you all, all of you for watching, for having watched up to this point, and have a good night.